Because you talk about the herdsmen. Yes. I mean, in recent times, we've also seen even Fulani uh, ethnic groupings suffer some of this violence. In Sokoto State, for instance, the people who were attacked with Fulani, in Zamfara State, for instance, very the people wrong. who yeah, were also wrong. attacked, just a moment, the people who were attacked were also Fulanese. In Kebi State, where, you know, where we also understand that there is a vibrant farmer, farmer Fulani population, they have also suffered some violence from these so called herdsmen. So can we really say it's about an ethnic group or is it, you know, something that we're yet to really put a finger on? To be honest with, uh, with you, I use the word Fulani as a generic term. That we have armed militias, many of them from foreign lands. You know, when you speak Hausa, and I speak Hausa like a native, I speak it better than my, my maternal language. Okay, and when somebody opens their mouth, you know precisely what kind of house they have. Whether it is house in Kano, house in Zari, house in Zazo, house in, house in Kasana, house in Sokwato. And when you know house in Niger, house in Mali, you know it. Many of these people are foreigners. We, we call them Fulanese because that is what they call themselves. And, uh, but I think it, this is more than just Fulanis. But I think you are, if I may respectfully disagree with you, the killings in, in Zamfara uh, ethnic, it is actually Fulanis killing normal Habbe house of people, indigenous house of people. And Berningwari, majority of them are Muslims, but they are, they are Bagi people. Berningwari, the city of the Bagi. In Sokoto? In Sokoto, it is mostly the farmers that are being attacked. In Kebi. In Kebi, the same thing. The, the farmers thing. who are sometimes, and most times, Fulani as well. Uh, have you ever come across a Fulani farmer? I think you're making this up, Mope. There's no such thing as a Fulani farmer. There's no such thing in, in, the, in the geomorphology of rural, rural there society. There are Fulani people who are settled. There are Fulani people who own land in, in this country, aren't but there? There are extremely few, and we don't really... You can call them Fulanis, but Fulani Gida who have lost their, their language and so on and so forth, we hardly even refer to them as Fulanis. We hardly ever refer to them as Fulanis. The real Fulanis we talk about are the pastoralists. There are settled Fulanis, of course, but many of them are, 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 are clerics, Islamic clerics, they are teachers, they are scholars, and they are, they are aristocracy, by the way. They are, they are the aristocracy. So those of them who are farmers are an extremely small population. Extremely small population. But they exist Trust me, I have been... They exist nonetheless. They do exist. This is from research done by other journalists. I mean, I haven't they had do. the privilege of, no. of doing the research myself. Yes. But I have read from other journalists who have. They yeah. have been to those places and they can identify full any population who are farmers and have also faced this crisis of having to deal with the so-called herdsmen. But we're talking in, in basic general terms. How many, what's the percentage of those people that are actually farmers? I don't dispute. Just like, in fact, there are, there are Biron people, there are thief people who actually earn cattle. And, and uh, I wouldn't for that purpose, therefore, say that uh, uh, middle belt peoples are also pastoralists and so on and so forth. I mean, uh, we, we should, uh, you know, be very precise, I think, in the social categorization of these people. Yes, indeed, th there's, there's nothing wrong. There would, be, there would be some small percentage of Fulanis who own farms. Mm. And then there wouldn't be anything wrong with that. And that is not the issue. The issue is the scale and the genocidal level of ethnic cleansing that is going on in the Middle Belt. So this has come up again because yes. of this recent uh, yes. onslaught. It was seen. Absolutely. Which some people say would tend to come up every electoral cycle. The moment we're getting closer to an elections, we hear calls for restructuring and we begin to get much louder. We also seem to see some violence on the increase. Do you think mm. they are connected? Uh, no, they are not connected. You see, Maokwe, uh, the, the call for restructuring has been going on for a long time. And I can tell you, in all sincerity, that I myself was quite skeptical about it at the very beginning. Uh, some of us are real Nigerian patriots. We love Fulanese. We love Muslims. They are our people. We have no issue with that. We, the issue we have is with this ethnic cleansing that is going on. All men and women of conscience must reject it. We must draw a road line beyond which 
we will not longer accept it. And this nonsense has got to stop now. We reject it in total. And, and uh, the call for restructuring is just right, because if this thing is going on with such a warped federal structure that we have, then it is better to have a proper federal system so that all the ethnic so-called minorities and the middle belt are not minorities because we've done some statistics they are up to 40 million people they're one of the largest groups in this country us as a group let these people have the right to choose through a referendum which region they want to belong to so people that want to come together that believe in the secular order of the state that believe in humanity that believe in social justice can come together those who want to introduce the wahhabi ideology from saudi arabia are free to do so chopping people's heads and chopping their arms that should be their goddamn business but People who want to live in a civilized community should be free to come together in their own region under their own government it's and their own laws. It's very interesting you use the word civilized. And some people will yes. say they, they, they take exception to that because the, for them, Sharia is civilization and, and they don't see anything wrong with it. Some countries have practiced this successfully. Now, I, I've told of Wahhabi ideology in, from Saudi Arabia. That is barbaric and totally... Uh, with due respect, it, 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 it is. They are allowed to you know, choose whatever... It is very barbaric. It, they have it, no rights with it, women. But, and, but, uh, but you, don't cannot, you, you cannot condemn what they have chosen. It is their way of life. It is their religion. It is what they believe in. You cannot say that it is barbaric. It is not... Uh, no, Maope, don't get me wrong. I lived in the Arab world. I lived in Tunis. I traveled through Egypt, through Morocco. I, I, I supervised projects in those countries. I speak some Arabic myself. And uh, Wahhabi Islam is not universal Islam. It is Islam particular to a, a, a part of the world. It is not the same as Turkey. You go to Turkey and you feel that you are among civilized people. When you go to, to Saudi Arabia, you feel you are among barbarians. I'm sorry. That is what I will never withdraw those words. Well, I don't think that Saudi Arabia will definitely agree. I mean, that is their own business. The that that is the way saying. I feel about it. But we have to take a moment. Now, Sorry. when we return, the president, in his October 1 broadcast last year, believes that matters relating to restructuring should be referred to the National Assembly and the National Council of State. The National Assembly hasn't disagreed with him. What is Mr. Milafia's take? In a moment, please stay with us.